hey guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl bridgie how you guys doing breakfast is over if you haven't seen my previous video with auntie jockey make sure you check my channel there was if the first video we did this is a continuation and basically in that first video she was sharing her knowledge or she was sharing her experience of relocating back to kenya after spending after living in the uk for 15 years with her husband so on this video we are going to talk about she's going to give us what i call golden tips on how to relocate successfully not just to kenya to anywhere in africa because i feel like although there are some issues that are not similar comparing countries but most africa is basically okay. the same issues yeah that we have so welcome back auntie jackie thank you. thank you for a very lovely breakfast i enjoyed it Thanks. it was nice You're thank welcome. you so much for being so hospitable so we are talking about what people should consider if they want to move back to Africa. Whether you're moving back to Tanzania, you're moving back to Kenya, you're moving back to Nigeria, you're moving back to Ghana. What do you think is the number one thing somebody should take into consideration or a family should take into consideration? Number one, plan. Plan. You must plan what you're coming to do. Don't just get up and say, I'm going to back to my country. If you don't plan, you are planning to fail. So you must plan. That is number one. So, it's, you have to plan. And she said, she's, she was saying to me before we started that, not just planning, you go over the plan over yes. and over. Yes. Make sure your plan is watertight. Yes. You need to plan to the details, nitty gritty of everything when you are coming back. So yes. don't just get up one day. Maybe your white boss insulted you at work. You just and say, you know, F your country, oh I'm going back God. home. No. Did I not come from somewhere? Uh -huh. No, that is wrong. <laughs> you came from somewhere and nobody told you to go there. You have <laughs> to go there yourself. <laughs> you say, after I have my country, I'm going back. No, you just no. pack your load and, <laughs> and you start going. <laughs> it's not, not going to be long before you start crying. You, you will cry. And when you come here, or Kenya, for example, the people that you knew when you left, if you have stayed for 15 years like I did, when I came back here, my God, those people had gone far. Oh, yeah. They had gone far. They had done things. Hmm. And now we want to start. Auntie Jockey, hey. that is a very, that is true. The people you live in, you know, I was working in the Federal Civil Service in Nigeria uh -huh. before I left uh -huh. to go yeah. abroad. Yes. Hmm. When I go to Nigeria now, uh -huh. those people are madam. Mm -hmm. You know what they call madam? Uh, they are big people. They are big people now. Mm -hmm. Those people have done very well for themselves. Yes. 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 So it's not you are going to come back and you think they are still going to be on the same yeah. level. They will even look. You know. You know oh. what? And the jockey, if you are not doing very well, mm -hmm. when you come back, they say, they will say. It's sometimes when you come and visit, they will tell you that it's not by force to stay in this abroad. <laughs> Why don't you just come back? After all, those of us are here. We are doing okay. Uh, they look at you and they look at you and you are like. Hmm. First of all, when you come, the first thing they want is to come and visit you, see how you are, how you are living, what you are driving, how you are wearing, all these things. Yeah, because some of them actually come abroad and they spend the kind of money that we that live they don't have. They have money. They bring money. They go and shop they in the most expensive stores. Yes. That we can't even shop over there. Yes. So don't assume that everybody in uh. Africa is suffering. So that's why she's saying plan, check your plan and tight, make it tight. Mm -hmm. Don't. Take, don't make it an emotional, emotional uh, decision. You uh, plan and plan and plan. If, for example, you're planning to come to Kenya, mm -hmm. come visit Kenya. Do right. your feasibility study. Check right. things. See how things are done. Go back. Mm -hmm. Then check your plan with your heart. Check it and then come back and see, does it study? Is it corresponding with what I want to do? That way, you will never fail. But if you pack up the things and, like what I me, I, I, I planned for three years, mm -hmm. but uh, there are so many other things that I went wrong. Yeah. So I planned and I wasn't very sure about the planning. But now I know I can tell somebody who is coming from abroad, from mm -hmm. the diaspora, mm -hmm. what to do. Because I've been here, I know where I went wrong, mm -hmm. I know my, I can tell you what to do. Yeah. And you still plan. Not to tell you what to do, I yeah. can advise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you still planned. You planned I a planned lot. I planned for three years. Yeah. And that was not even enough. And I visited for three, for those times. Mm. It wasn't enough because I still went wrong. Because mm. I, the people that I was going coming to to advise me, were not from they had no idea of diaspora there were right. people who are here right you know so um it was hard yeah so that's tip number one and mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. plan and don't two. make your decision to relocate to africa as a passenger yeah mm -hmm. it shouldn't be an emotional decision yeah. make sure you have a very good plan that's one and two number three you were mm -hmm. talking about children or people with young families unless you have enough do not uproot your children from wherever you are now. Mm -hmm. The diaspora, children have um, 
you know, some of them are born there, some of them we took them when they were young. Mm -hmm. And now to come and if you don't have enough money, don't come to bring children here because the schools that are going to be like your schools in the UK are mm -hmm. very expensive here. Yeah. So you don't take children from the from the diaspora and you have to come and bring them to the local schools. Yeah. You have to do the international schools because yeah. that's what they understand. Yeah. But if you bring children who don't even speak, like for example Swahili, mm -hmm. and you take them to the local schools, there's no way they can make it. Yeah. No. It's going to be very, very hard. Yeah. Yes. And you find a lot of people who take this decision to bring their young children here mm -hmm. and at the end of maybe a year or two, they end up coming back. You will, because what's one of one one of the things that causes causes people to go back, the children themselves will complain and always tell you we want to go back. Right. I wanna I know of a family. We wanna go back to our friends. This here, there is no this, there is no that, there is no you know, the children will mm -hmm. say that to you. Yeah. But um, if you're able to take them to this uh, international schools, their language is the same as wherever you yeah. are there. Yeah, they have the same standard. The same standard. Mm. The kids have the same standard, mm. but it's expensive. It is expensive. Very, very expensive. Yeah, and if you are not careful, if you have money for business, for instance, mm -hmm. and you start to take from it to pay school fees, you end up not finishing whatever business or whatever you want to set up or whatever plan that you have for your work or business, mm. because you are paying school fees by time, let's say you have three kids yes. in secondary school. Mm. You pay, and in Africa, you pay every, every, every semester, every term. Mm. By the time you pay for one year, the money is gone. It's difficult. Because that, the money goes very quickly. the planning plan. Do I have enough money for the children to go to school? Do I have enough money for a place to stay? Do I have enough money to maintain that lifestyle? Yeah. What a place to mean? stay is a big deal as well. Do you think that you necessarily need to build a house or would it help if you have a house already to stay when you come? You may have a house to stay, but uh, how do you... You know, stay, having a house is not enough. You have to have an income. So if you don't have an income, you may have a nice house, but how do you maintain the lifestyle? Yeah, because a lot of people living in that spot don't want to come and rent. I don't know about, you know, um, Nick Kenya. It's a very expensive exercise. In, in Nigeria, you pay one year at once when you are renting. You don't pay monthly. And the kind of area you want to leave, we are talking about millions for you to rent. Yes. So yes. that also goes to the cost of relocating by the time you start paying that kind of rent. So most Nigerians, for instance, would like to have their own place. They like to build their own house before considering relocation. But you are saying that it's okay to have your own house. It's very, very good to help your finance, but it's not enough. The kind of houses I've seen people building are houses that uh, are so expensive and big, huge, huge Mansions, houses. Yeah. If you take that money, especially in Kenya, instead of building that humongous house and beautiful, because for a beautiful house you have to build this in a nice area, which yeah. is the land is expensive yeah. and the building is expensive. Go to a low income area, buy a piece of land, build rental accommodation, My. which you can. And it's not going to cost you a lot because when you do that low income houses, uh, they are not the decor and everything. It's not. It's not going to cost you a lot. I know my friend who is in the UK now. I can't mention her name, mm. but she has done that. Mm -hmm. And her income now from that low in low uh, income area mm. is six hundred thousand. Wow! So she earns income from the rent. She earns income from the rent. So she built the houses. She built the um, the house in an area in an area that's low income, and yes. then people are renting. But she, she managed to, because you're not going to spend a lot of money with the with the interior. Mm. It's only the walls and whatever and the, mm. the tiles and things like that. Mm. She managed to build. I think there were thirty six apartments. Wow. There wow. are thirty six, and out of that, the calculation we did, she's not, she's earning six hundred thousand. So such a person now can come and go. That's Kenya shilling. That's Kenya shilling, right. which is about maybe five, five, five or I don't know how much it is in, in the pounds now. Mm -hmm. But you can. But in, you know when you come here, we are yeah. not talking pounds. Yeah. The house yeah. that you will rent or yeah. it will be, you okay. can. She can afford to rent the house for two hundred thousand oh, yeah. and still have four hundred thousand for her own use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and they, you know she did she she built that place with two, with about three years mm -hmm. and she has finished it. Yeah. So she hasn't got any loan from anybody. So she she's she's fine. Yeah. She's fine. Yeah. What about if, if you are not retired yet, let's say you are not retired and you want to still keep active and you want to have income, mm -hmm. how about that, the two, source of income? There are too many things to do, but people always think about what I, like me, I did what I saw my friend do. Right. I came to, she had a, a, a hotel apartment, I came to do a hotel apartment. Yeah. There are so many other things that people can do. For example, farming. Farming? Yes. 
you tell people you can come here and farm if you if you go to i don't know what is the name of that uh, that place in uh, in the uk where people buy vegetables it's not it's not Peterfield market there is a market there where you buy food you cannot satisfy satisfy the market there no, you can't some people when i talk about farming some people say oh i don't have land oh, in kenya you come here and you lease land Ah. You can lease a hundred acres if you want, but I would advise if you start with 20, 20 acres, that is a lot of farming, mm. and you can plant all these things that people um, people want in the diaspora, like the French beans and the, all those things, eh? mm. the Asian mm. Asian vegetables. Mm. I have friends who are doing that. Yeah. I am now in it as well. Yeah. I understand that Kenyans are big on farming and producing food stuff. Yes, the environment is good for that. Yes, Sometimes you, you go to the, to the area, whatever you want to plant, mm. you go to that. Area, you will always find land. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people run away from farming in Nigeria because the, the climate sometimes is very, very harsh for farming. For instance, you might plant corn and there will be no rain. And if you haven't got the system of you know, irrigation whereby you can artificially water your, your corn, then they die. People don't just, I said, number one, plan, plan, plan again. If mm. you want to do something like that, mm. number one thing that you do is a borehole. Yeah, you get water you available. You get water available. Yeah. It, you can't farm waiting for rain. Yeah. No. Yeah, because you cannot control the weather. You cannot yeah. control the weather. So you do the you do the borehole first, yeah. and then you, you know you have water. If you do that, you haven't bought the land. So the money that you're coming with, you lease land. It's cheap to, to, to lease, lease land. Yes, it's yeah. not expensive. Yeah. And when you do that, the sky is the limit. Yeah. Farmers are making money in this yeah. country. There's one who came from America and he's doing that. Yeah. And um, seafood farming is another big deal in Nigeria now. A lot of people are farming fishes. They are farming snails. They are farming prawns and, you know, that's, that's true. If that you don't is, want to farm crops, that good. That's yeah, good. seafood. But first of all, go to whichever country you want to sell the food. Europe is the same everywhere. Yeah, but you know, for a country as large as Nigeria, you don't even need to export because there's enough market for consumption within the country. You guys are many. We are two hundred million. We are forty-eight. <laughs> yeah, you are, are, you are two states. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you were saying something about okay. I think you're talking about how people should choose what they need, they know they can manage your like, strength. Your strength. Yes. Look so. for you know. First of all, you have to identify your strength so that you know. When I go back, um, am I a good salesperson? Can I be able to do that? Like for me, I have I haven't got energy to do a lot of things now. Um, I am. But I don't have to be the one doing it. If you start an idea, you always find people who are trained in that. Yeah. And then you, you, provide, them. you provide them a job and they'll be happy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a very good one. Yeah. The next one is about spending. Oh. I know somebody that came, you know, this same relocation thing. It's a family member of mine. Mm -hmm. Came with a huge purse. And because the planning, like we said, was not good enough, the planning was not tight, it wasn't watertight, mm -hmm. ended up spending, you know, about a year, and all the money was gone. There was nothing left, and he had to go, because he had to go back, and all that money has been spent. For you to feel like you are living the same life that you live in the diaspora, it means that you will want to go and leave the areas that are making you feel like you're living in the diaspora which is very very expensive mm -hmm. they come in here i've seen people come in here they buy Range Rovers and v 8 and all those cars and they go and if they are renting a house they rent a house in a very affluent area so you'll be working for that house to and pay the money that you came with you'll give it to that owner of that house you'll be paying the rent for that house you will give that first person the, the, the money yeah and uh, then they start living large yeah. If you saw the car that you were driving when you came here, the, the, the metal was <laughs> dropping on the road. You stayed with us. <laughs> we had a very, very old car which we paid 200,000 Kenya shilling to buy. To buy. And 200,000 Kenya shilling is about, it was about 150, I think. 1,500. One, one, one Some people, a lot of Nigerians who live in Daswa will have a problem driving a, an old battered car like that. Because in Nigeria, Even cars is a very big deal. We like big cars. We like, you know, the latest cars. Because people will ask you, ah, ah, all your time you spent abroad, so this is the kind of car. You know, this, this, this is the car you got. Can't you bring car from there at least? If you know you don't have money, if you know you, you, you got, why do you come back? <laughs> well, or they will now start comparing with other people and say, look at this person came back. And this is what the, this is the car they are driving. No, even the idea of for us Nigerians, for a lot of Nigerians, I know that driving a battered car is out of it. Forget it. It won't happen. Forget it. No, forget it. No, no. 
we like smart, expensive, luxury cars. Yeah. Then, because cars is one of the ways we show off. Even here. <laughs> we show off with cars and houses. So telling somebody about a car. But I mean, a lot of Nigerians will buy the car there and ship it down here same before as, they come. Same as here. Mm, you'll buy it. You can buy it in America or in Germany. Buy a nice Mercedes and then ship it down here. So at least you have something decent to drive. But telling somebody not to buy uh, to drive an old car, oh, they will look at you funny. But some Kenyans mm. who really want to do some. Some Kenyans who come here, I've seen them driving very old cars. Yeah, but one, one thing I find about the lifestyle between Kenyans and Nigerians is that Kenyans are very, their lifestyle is quite toned down. Yes. It it's is, very minimalistic. It is, it is true. Very, very minimalistic mm. living, the way, mm. even the dressing, mm. the women, most mm. of them have braids. Mm. The salon I went yesterday, I went to have my nails done. They didn't have a hot tongue. No, they didn't have hot tongue. I said, oh, you don't call wig or weaver. Because a lot of women wear wigs, um, braids. Mm. They will braid their hair, you know, so it's more like a more natural look. Whereby in, in most Nigerian women will go for like this, my kind <laughs> This of is what we are doing these days now. Simple. I wake up and I go. Yeah, so you are quite natural and simple mm. I mean, like, in your lifestyle, minimalistic. And you are telling me that even the rich people in Kenya don't, you won't know when you see them. They no. just dress down. Some of them will come here and they'll sit here and you will not know you will that, not they, know they, that they, are, they are millionaires. No, especially. No. But I, I, having said that, <laughs> It's a, it's a tribal thing again. It's that, a tribal there's thing. A, yeah. there's, the, there's a tribe here in the, in the, in the, in the Kenya. The Kikuyu people. The Kikuyu people would walk here with the, that, that, that clothes. With slippers. Yes. And they are very rich. But there's a loop. Yeah. The loop person is not going to drive a battered car. Yeah, okay. You know, they live well. They, they must like be that. from Nigeria. I think they live well. <laughs> That's the way to live. <laughs> yeah, because Nigerians, the reason why some people even make money is because they want to oppress other people. And they work very hard. Oh, well, we work very hard, but we also live. Um, I, a very large ostentatious life and some people unfortunately cannot afford that lifestyle but they still want to live that lifestyle and that's why they get into trouble wow yeah because it's always about impressing your neighbor you know there's, there's something in Nigeria they call pass my neighbor <laughs> it's a generator <laughs> it's a small one so if you live in you know areas, I, pass my, my, I pass my neighbor too for you to if you live in a poor area uh -huh. and you want to show your neighbor that you pass them mm. you gotta buy that generator because you know we have issue of electricity yeah, yeah, yeah. so people always generate their electricity. so you go and buy that small generator they call so they gave you the name i pass my neighbor <laughs> so the, the class thing in nigeria is a big deal let's not go into that anyway so we're talking about spending so you're saying that lifestyle you have to tone it down Come in terms of your down. spending yes. don't spend too much on you know yeah. trying to impress anybody no just live just your be you just be normal be and you. quiet and live a very you know an average lifestyle do your own thing and mm -hmm. be yourself yeah yeah impressing me or the other neighbor uh, it's just adding pain to your life mm. don't do that yeah. it's not necessary yeah no okay because and again even if i'm not dressed or doing whatever money doesn't hide people will know this woman even if you see her sitting like this she mm. has money yeah mm. yeah we like buying uh, expensive things we like designers shiny things <laughs> new things handbags for instance you know, if you don't have a designer's bag, the way women will perceive you, the first thing they will look at you is your handbag. And they do that in Nigeria. I've seen Nigerian movies. Mm, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like that in real life. Is it's it? not everybody, obviously, but most people, yeah. If they ha if we have money, you have to know. You must know. <laughs> How could you not know? Uh -uh. How can I oppress you and I have money? And uh, we are not mates anymore if I have money and you don't. So mm. the only way I can show you I have money is for to, to see it. You see it on me. You see the car, car that I drive. The, the house that I live and the clothes that I wear, you know, you see it on my children, you see it on vacation. Vacation is a big deal, it's a competition. People, I'm, I'm changing the subject. Okay. <laughs> He's not talking about Nigeria. Yeah. So it's, I think I we are quite different. Them. I still have them. The Nigerian yeah. people. They, oh, they I love my Nigerian that, people. That, that, that large, that large. Yeah, like, that's like, just like, who we are. It's a lifestyle difference. Yeah. It's not to say that. They set you know, the pace for Africa. <laughs> Yo, Nigerians are quite um, glamorous. Yes. The women are quite glamorous. I've seen that, oh yeah. yes, mm. women are quite glamorous, and uh, yeah, you know the thing about every people is that we have both the good and the bad. Mm. So it's not all good. You have or to choose the hand. good. Yeah, the the important thing is that you strike a balance yes, yes, for yourself. Yes, this is what works for me. Like for instance, if I go to Nigeria, I'm not going to be competing with my, you know, my friends that but made too much money. But you because the way they make money is not the way I've made my money in the UK. Mm. So mm. I'll be stupid for me to go there and start dragging with them that because they have the latest uh, uh, Rolls Royce. Me too. I want to go and buy Rolls Royce. No. I have to strike a balance. This works for me. I'm not about to, because they go to work and they can they, they do corruption and they get this huge yeah, amount you, of money. You are, you are me, I'm working for every, every every dime that I earn. Yes. So yeah, striking a balance with your spending and then we're talking about spending for people as well, giving people money. People coming to you with expectation to pay school fees, house rent, give them money for food. Choose where, choose. You can be able to tell who is in need. 
Mm-hmm. If there's anybody who is need, in need, dire need, and you can see it, don't hesitate to help. Yeah. Mm. Help, but don't make it. You do it in a way that is not going to harm you. Do not fad or, mm-hmm. or, or aid laziness. Don't become, don't become Father Christmas. Or oh, Mother Teresa. Yeah, or oh, Mother Teresa. Don't aid laziness. So only do what you feel you can do. Don't allow people to ruin you. Spend, you spend all your money get, on them. They will use you if you like it. If they ruin you, you finish spending your money, they'll they still come and laugh at you they and laugh. tell you, look, 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 look at somebody that came from England. Yeah. I will not even better than you. Mm-hmm. So don't allow people to mock you. Be wise in your spending. Yes. And yeah, so finally... The final points we're talking about. I hope you are enjoying it so far. <laughs> yeah, we're giving golden tips if you want to relocate back to Africa, either to Kenya, to Ghana, Ghana, Zimbabwe, anywhere in Africa. It's basically the same. Go over the, the last one. It's oh, going over your over your uh, plan again and again and again. Plan, plan, plan. 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 Don't plan. if you don't plan, you have already planned to fail. You cause some people come without having money. You can't come. Oh. You'd, you'd be surprised. So people just come, maybe they have 1,000 pounds and they, they buy tickets and then they're here. Then you'll go back. That is planning to fail. You will oh. come here and you'll still go back. I kid you not. Mm. I went to Nigeria in 2019, mm. Christmas, mm-hmm. and I, somebody from my hometown mm-hmm. is back from America. Yeah. And this guy mm-hmm. is now living in the village. He's got no job. He's li- living in his parents' house. He's got nothing. So did he come with money? No. Obviously, he, he, he didn't come with anything. And he's lived in America for a number of years. So don't be surprised. That's a very good example of people who come without money. They just buy tickets and come. Hmm? Unless you've been kicked out by, by, by the government. There. No, don't he come. wasn't kicked out. Don't come. He's an American citizen. So let him go back to America. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's running from child support. <laughs> That's the oh, rumor. Maybe. He's running from child support because uh, he got I, separated from his wife. But he's got children. You should take... Anyway, let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so don't come. If you don't have money, Africa is expensive. It's not cheap too. It is cheap. The last are kind of cheaper than coming from the diaspora, living in the diaspora. But still, your money will go quickly. So it goes very, very you need quickly. to have a, 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 a purse. You have a purse. I see people coming here. Like, for example, you have a hundred, a thousand, um, one hundred pounds. And they change it. And when they go to a place like a pub where they are drinking with their friends, mm. they don't think about, you know, you, you, once you change the money, it's become, I don't know how much it is in your country, but 100 pounds is going to give you about 13,000 Kenya shillings. When they bring that beer there, and I tell you 250, you calculate that and say, oh, it's only 250. Yeah. Uh, it's only two, one pound something, one pound, one yeah. pound seven or something yeah. like that. And you think, you carry the, the pound, you buy four pounds. Yeah. This is cheap. You think it's cheap? Yeah, you think it's cheap? Yeah. It's not cheap. In Kenya, 250 will take you very far. Yeah. So don't use your money like that. Based on comparing it to no, how much money no, no, it is, no, no, it's no. cheap. When you don't. When, yeah. And whatever, even now, I've been here for 13 years. Whenever I use money, I always. You still compare it? I change it in my mind. You change it to pounds? Yes. <laughs> to pound, so I know. So you're not doing like you, you so, know when people go abroad for the first time before they spend any money, they, you first change it to your local currency. I am doing it the same. <laughs> so now you're doing the reverse, yes, you are changing it to I pounds now. It to pound and I think how much it is. Oh my god, mm. oh, this has been a really, really interesting. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the gist so far and um, I hope you've taken these tips. They're going to help you if you have plans. Because I did a video one time and I was asking people, it was a live video, and I was asking people, yeah. would you rather retire? And live in the UK or or in the diaspora generally because a lot of my subscribers live in America, mm-hmm. Australia, yeah. you know, all across Europe. Yeah. And ninety nine percent of them said they are going to Africa. They say they don't want to grow old abroad because it's just it's a life night. It's not good for old people. That's true. When you are young in the in the in the diaspora, life is good. Wait until you start getting old, and this finger is aching, <laughs> another one here. All your uh, all your knees. All the knees and you. I kid you not. Whenever I come to Africa, I feel stronger. When you the sun beats me, oh my, these knees that yes. were telling me, uh-huh. they will be strong. Honestly, I feel stronger. You see, even all the people here, when your grandmother is very old, mm-hmm. in the morning when she has breakfast, we take her outside to sit in the sun. Because the bones of an old person need the sun. They yeah. need that. They need vitamin that. D. The vitamin D is needed. Yeah. Now D. you tell me I'm old and I'm sitting in the house. Winter the whole time, I don't know how many months I'm sitting uh, in the cold. No, that place is really bad for old people. And yeah. then you can't even, you can't, you, you can go out if I want to go shopping. Even if I don't have money and I want to go out there shopping. I can because the weather allows me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's another thing here that we didn't talk about. 
in you in the in the European in the in, in the diaspora, people are very very busy working, yeah. working, working. Yeah, yeah, working, yeah. Working. yeah. Mm-hmm. Even here we are busy, but we always manage to have time. Have time for to visit, to visit and yeah. talk, to spend time. Yeah. I mean, I've been here less than one week, and I've seen you. This is the like the third or fourth time I'm seeing you. Yeah. This is so it's good, are. yeah. And that's a big problem in it. That's where it's isolation. That is loneliness. It. That's what I Social about. isolation is a big problem in the diaspora for old people. I used to see when I was there, there's this trolley that old people carry yes. to go shopping. That thing <laughs> is the one that made me want to come to Kenya. Because I was like, like she said, if I get to this age and I'll carry this. I'm not pushing this trolley push this at my age when you are 70. That's caused me this thing. Uh, my friend, in Africa, there is um, there is always people who can help you to go shopping. Oh yeah. Then there is another thing. I don't know where I read about this, but I read about it that women we have 20, twenty five thousand words. This is a kukuyu woman, eh? I've never heard this before. Okay, she has to put it in because she's been telling it me. It is true. She said, and she reads a lot. She's as you as you see, she's very she's very exposed. She's very learned, and she keeps telling me that. I don't know, Auntie Joke, where did you read this thing from? You go and do your own research. Even the people who are listening to us today, some of them must know that women... Maybe it's in Kukuyu, Kukuyu no, Journal. No, 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 no. I read it somewhere. She said that women have 25,000 words per day that you have to use. That if you don't use it, what will happen if you don't... She said, if you don't talk 25,000 words a day, you if you don't speak it, it begin to affect you. It will affect you because it is in you. It has to come out. Yeah. So, she and Maureen, they always meet up so that they can use up their yes. 25,000 words. Yes. But now, even when I'm in the UK, I try to bring my friends. They are working. Who has time to use even 10,000? <laughs> Who has time to use? <laughs> Not only 25,000. Who has time to use even 1,000 words? Where is the time? Is it when I'm working that I will be using words? Oh, yeah, I bring my friend. I tell my friend, Maureen, hey. I have not even used 5,000. Come. <laughs> <laughs> Let's use it up. <laughs> I have to use my word. So PR is social like that. What yeah. I'm trying to say. So yeah. we can be able to yeah. talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm. it's fun. It's always fun. Because you have people. I mean, it's not natural for people to be so isolated. It's not. Not that's having not people like, arrive. That's not what God created us. It's only for Africans. It's uh, not our lifestyle. No, I have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to talk. <laughs> I have to talk. I have to talk. I even tell people, even men, I tell them, you. <laughs> if you're not talking to your wife, <laughs> don't forget that she has 25,000 words to talk. She oh will go God. looking for it. You talk to her also to reduce. Make sure you talk, at least you're helping them to communicate. <laughs> yeah, talk to your wife so that she can reduce the words. Oh and my God. If you God. don't do that, she'll look for people to talk to. to. Talk to. And she'll talk even about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Guys, you see? Mm. This is how. Chineke. I, she cried. Chineke. <laughs> This is how she cracks me up whenever I'm with her. I'm telling you, do you know when we left here? This is morning. It's around nine, nine something now. And we left here after 10 last night. Because once you sit with her, okay, the gist never ends. She will make you, you have, laugh. But the 25,000, I have not finished. You see, she, you just started though. Yeah. So then, now maybe you'll use 5,000. You still have 20,000 to go. Oh, oh. I'm not even finished. You, don't, it, you know, when I, you finish from here, now you go and talk more over there. Go over there. there. There's those guests of You have your guests there. So you spend 5,000 with them. Mm. Then you will reduce it. It's more small. They go for meetings because they are going for a meeting. Okay, so let's <laughs> say goodbye to... now because I think we've, we've just said enough. <laughs> we can carry on and on and on. But yes. uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Please g- give this video a thumbs up and yes. don't forget this lovely apartment hotels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Nightingale. Nightingale apartment. Nightingale apartment in Mombasa. In Mombasa, when mm-hmm. you're coming to Mombasa, you're looking for a very serene, quiet place. Look at the pool. You've seen the pool. I've shown you. The environment is lovely. It's a place to stay. I'm telling you. You have <laughs> peace here. You have food. You have music. Wherever you like. You can stay. I woke up around 6:30 today, and everywhere was already bright and mm-hmm. shining with sun. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes, yes. And plan it. Even if you're going on holidays, remember to plan. Don't spend money you don't have. For coming to holidays. But holiday is important. Some people don't take holiday. They work all year round without taking holiday. That's wrong. Some Africans do that. That's wrong. Oh yes, a lot of Africans they don't see you the importance say of it. You must thank you to your body. Your, oh. your body has already. It's not given. coming from you. <laughs> they say thank you to your body. Yes, your mm-hmm. body has given you all that money. Mm-hmm. At least thank you. Rest okay. your body. Say yes. thank you to yes. it. Yes. Take some vitamin D. Yeah. yeah, and mm-hmm. you can come to Africa. It's lovely here in Kenya. I'm not gonna. Lie. I'm gonna definitely come back mm-hmm. to Kenya, and I'm looking forward to visiting Gambia, and Tanzania. The only place I'm not going to go to is South Africa because they don't like Nigerians there. They kill Nigerians there, so mm. I will not go there. But where I'm welcome, I felt very welcome. I felt at home in Kenya. You see, and Joke, I just met her a few days ago, and you see how we are laughing. I feel at home in Kenya, and I've loved it. Thank you so much, Auntie. You're welcome. Oh, I'm going to miss you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for speaking to us. You're 
you're Say welcome. bye-bye to my subscribers. Say bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> Give the thumbs up. Give a thumbs up to this video if you enjoyed my chat with Auntie Joke. I'll speak to you in my we'll next time. see you time. again. We'll do yeah. that again. Yes. yes. This time we'll go to Kenya, that mountain. We'll go to the Mount Kenya mountain. area. Mount yes. Kenya. I'll take her to go and see Mount Kenya. A yeah. beautiful place. Okay. Yes. All right. And we'll go to the Maasai Mara. I'll talk to you in my next one. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.